This board is so bad that somebody tried to shoot it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at the Asus Maximus 2 Formula. This is an awesome, awesome board. If you remember the original Maximus Formula, that was an X38 chipset, and it was one of the first, it was one of the highest uh, end Intel chipset boards that Asus ever made, and it was an awesome board. It had the X38 North, uh, North Bridge, and it had the ICH9R South Bridge. Well, this is two, so it's twice as good. It's, uh, it's a, it's, this is an awesome motherboard. Now, Intel and Asus, rather than using the X38 again, or even going to the X48, they decided to use the P45. If you've seen uh, the last few videos I've done, the P45 is huge right now. It's the mainstream chipset. It's doing really, really well. It's very fast. It has 1600 megahertz front side bus support, and it's all, it's all crazy. So that's what people are using now. And even though this is a high-end gaming motherboard, they used that mainstream chipset instead of one of those high-end chipsets. And that just goes to show you how powerful the P45 chipset is. This board is gorgeous. Uh, if you look at it, it's not even about like, it's the, obviously it's always about performance, but if you guys have really nice cases, this looks awesome. This board is sweet. They have a whole new cooling solution here with a completely different design, uh, and it's, it ends up giving you this package that looks amazing. So uh, let's talk about some of the specs on this thing. As you already know, P45 does support up to 1600 megahertz front side bus and beyond. So if you want to run at native frequencies, you can use the QX9770, the fastest uh, processor on the market right now for consumer boards, for gaming enthusiast boards. But if you're going to overclock, you can go above that. If you have a 1333, you can get to 16 and plus. If you already have a 16, you can go beyond. I'm pretty sure this board will get you all the way up to 2000 megahertz front side bus if you wanted to. Now, another good thing about this board is it's not using DDR3. That might be a good for some guys, but bad for others. But if you're on a budget, DDR3 will kill you. I mean, it throws you right off the, the board. It's like six times more expensive. DDR2 is at like the lowest prices it's ever been. I mean, it is dirt, dirt cheap. It's crackhead cheap right now. Uh, so this will support DDR2 up to 1200 megahertz. So that's the very fast overclock stuff. And what's really good about that is that since it has the lower latencies and it's so cheap, it performs almost as good sometimes as the DDR3s, which are running those really high CAS latencies. So the timings are much tighter on this DDR2, and this stuff will take the fastest DDR2 you can throw at it. Uh, now let's talk about uh, input-output for your slots. Uh, you do have two PCI Express 2.0 slots on here, uh, X16. One will, if you have one video card, you can do X16. If you're going to run Crossfire X, it'll do 8 and 8, which is still fine. All those video cards have PCI Express 2.0, so you're not going to run into a bottleneck uh, on your memory bandwidth uh, or anything like that. The PCI bus will take care of that because it's double. On top of that, you got three PCI Express X1 slots, so three of those. One one of them is going to be used with a little surprise they include in the box, which will, uh, when we do the tour of the, the board, I'll show it to you. And then, of course, uh, on top of that, you have two PCI 2.2s, uh, which are great for your peripherals and stuff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about storage. This thing has a lot of, uh, you know, options for storage and what you can do with it. Uh, there's three controllers on this board. Uh, you have your South Bridge, you have a Marvel controller, and then you have a Silicon Image SIL5723. The Silicon Image is going to uh, do two SATA ports in RAID 0 and 1, so those are good for your storage. Uh, your Marvel controller is going to do your IDE, and it's going to do your eSATA, which is included on the back panel. You also have the Southbridge chipset, which of course is going to control all your, uh, you know, the big, the first six, the blue ones. Those six, so in total you have eight SATAs, uh, IDE, you have eSATA, uh, and then, you know, six, the six that are up here that are hardware controlled by the RAID controller that's on the board, so you're not going to be using up CPU. That one will do RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, 0 plus 1, 1 plus 0, all that stuff, it's going to do it all. Let's talk real quick about overclock features. Let me get into the overclocking features before I do the tour. 16 phase power. Let that sit for a second. Maximus. Maximus, yes. Maximus 6. Shut up, Randy. 16 phase power. It's insane. 16 phase power is, is ridiculous. For your quad course, it's going to be awesome. Each phase is going to run cooler. It's going to let you overclock more. You're going to get everything. It's just better. Not only does it have 16 phase power for the CPU, it actually has three phase power for the North Bridge. Uh, it also has two phase power for your memory. So that's really cool. That's something that you don't find too often. It's got BIOS flash. So in case you corrupt your BIOS, you can go backwards. Again, Maximus, you took it too far. You want to go back, you corrupted your BIOS. It's really simple. Uh, you got Extreme Tweaker, which is their over, uh, overclocking from the OS. Very simple, you can make it fully automatic, you just slide it, it does voltages for you, or you can go manual and do whatever you want. The increments are really small, really easy to tweak to the bleeding edge. So I was very happy with that, I thought it was really cool, plus it has a lot of profiles that you can quick switch between, so gaming and power conserve, whatever, you can do whatever you want, so that's really cool. It's got onboard power, reset, and clear CMOS buttons, which is also really cool. Uh, so it's got a lot of great features for overclockers, and it's going to be really
really good for you guys if you want to get those uh, those front side bus speeds in excess of 1600 megahertz and up to 2000. You're going to need to use all of these front side, uh, all these uh, overclocking features, uh, you know, to get to that bleeding edge. Let's talk about what's on this board. Let's take a look at it because it is really, really pretty. Zoom in on that. Just take a, a, do a pan and scan of this thing because I mean, they really went out of their way to make this board look good. And not, not too many people do that. Some people don't care, but look at that. They put a little like red trim there. That's really cool. And you know, before they used the stack fin design for the coolers. Now they switch. This is called pin fin. Uh, so it's a little bit different than the stacked fins and it's supposedly like 20% more efficient. It's really cool and it's very low profile. Uh, but from what I understand, it will keep the board up to 20% cooler overall, your North Bridge, your South Bridge. It's all copper between all the coolers. Um, um, so let me go ahead and go over the board with you. Take a look, uh, if you can go up to the top here. Boom, thank you very much. That is your socket 775 LGA. Uh, so that is where your CPU is gonna go. It's ready for your 45 NMs, your, you know, uh, Wolfdales and every core you want, they're all gonna go on here, 45 NM, 1333 and 1600 megahertz front side bus and up. Uh, moving on over here, you got four DIMMs that'll do up to 16 gigabytes. 16 gigabytes of DDR2 up to 1200 megahertz. It does support Crossfire X Ready RAM as well as it'll also support uh, your four gig sticks of RAM. Moving on over here, of course, uh, as always, over here and over here, you got PCI, uh, I'm sorry, IDE as well as floppy disk drive headers. I always stumble on that. How can you say floppy disk drives anymore? They're so old, it's crazy. You got 24 pin power connector over here. Very low profile chipset cooler. It's really low, but it's all got copper underneath that. This is like a, a facade over here. It covers the copper. Uh, let's see, what else can we go over on this board? Go down, down over here. Come, come, come. Bring me the camera right there. See those two buttons? Reset, start, reset, start. That's really cool, okay? When you don't, when you, you know, first peel the computer outside of the case, you don't have to have to wire up your switch. Very simple to turn on the computer, make sure it works, make sure you don't have to RMA anything or that something's not defective. Uh, moving right along over here to the back panel, starting from the top. As you can see, we do still have PS2s, several USB 2.0s, as well as your dual gigabit ethernet. You have Firewire and eSATA. And you see this little button right here? You know what that is. You know what that is, overclockers. That's your clear CMOS button. And it's on the back, it's not on the inside. So, you know, a lot of times you put the computer together, then you overclock it. So it's nice that it's on the back and you don't have to open the case to get into it. Dual gigabit LAN. And can you guess what's missing? What would normally be here? I mean, you guys, you guys watch me do this stuff all the time. What's normally like right here? Well, I'll show you. I'll show it to you right now. I'll tell you what's missing. You're missing your audio. And that's why I'm going to pull out this box. Let's take a look at this box. This is a little accessory box that you get inside the box. It's a box in a box. Check this out. This is the first thing you're gonna see when you go in there. That is right. Boom. Very nice. Onboard Supreme FX X-Fi 8-channel audio card from Creative Labs. This is a very nice card. It's gonna give you superior performance compared to onboard sound, and it's got pretty much all the connectivity you could ever want. There's an SPDIF on there, eight channels, 7.1. There's a coax and an optical PDIF on there. Uh, so you get a lot of good connectivity on there. Let me show you the other little package full of goodies. You got a Nice little painted input output panel. Very nice with uh, the little padding on the back that I love. Keeps everything running quiet. LCD poster, excellent. When you first put the computer together, something's wrong. You don't know, you know what's wrong. This will tell you a code. You look in the manual, it'll fix it for you. What else do we got on here? Uh, this is very nice. These are useful. Firewire and USB 2.0s. In case you didn't have enough on the back, here is more for you. These are really cool, useful brackets that they give you. Oh, my favorite. I forgot. I almost forgot about my favorite little toys. The Q connectors from Asus. These are awesome. These keep everything nice and simple. So, you saw the board. This is part of the Republic of Gamers uh, series of motherboards from Asus. Uh, this is an awesome product. If you're going to overclock, if you want to build a gaming system, if you want to run uh, Crossfire X, use 24850s or 24870s or 24870X2. You can do all that on this board. You can overclock it to Kingdom Come. It doesn't care if you mess up. It has easy steps for you to fix what you, uh, you know, where you messed up. You can clear the CMOS. It's got a very friendly BIOS for overclocking. It's meant for overclocking enthusiasts, gamers, just like you, the guys that are watching this video. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, go ahead and email me at the email below. I will see you guys next time. For more information on the Asus Maximus 2 Formula motherboard, go to compusa.com and type in A455-2832 into the search box. Or you can call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-800-COMP-USA.